Markets. With me is Norena Hertz, who's an economist and author, and David Riley, who is from the credit ratings agency Fitch. Um, to you, first of all, David, just um, with this latest news from America that there's going to be a possible downgrading in the in the triple a debt rating um, your company uh, does a similar job to uh, standard and Poor's, who are reported to be to making this downgrade um, what do you make of it do, have you yourselves been considering downgrading the u.s um, well we have been reviewing the u.s sovereign rating we, we wanted to wait until um, they reached an agreement on the on, on the debt ceiling and a possible um, uh, deficit reduction um, we actually do share a lot of the concerns that um, I think Standard and Poor's and others have expressed. Um, from our perspective, though, we think it's a little bit early to be um, calling a downgrade on, on the US because um, we want to sort of see whether they can reach agreement uh, towards the end of this year in terms of uh, putting in place a, a deficit reduction plan. But I think Standard and Poor's have been signalling um, that this has been coming and I don't think it will come as a surprise to the market. So if they do go ahead with the downgrade, you don't think it's going to make the turmoil worse than it already is? Um, I'd, I'd be surprised if that was the case, but as I say, I think it's pretty well flagged. If, if I think, if, if Standard & Poor's indicated that uh, further downgrades were on the way, um, then that might be um, a little bit, that might be a little bit different. That would then sort of signal that maybe this, in their uh, opinion, um, is starting to sort of move out of, um, on, on, on a very bad trajectory. Um, so we'll have to see what they say in that regard. Uh, Norina, uh, these numbers on the stock market boards that we've all been seeing today, I mean, to me, they don't mean a lot. I think to a lot of people, it's hard to interpret what they mean. Um, so what kind of effects will they be having on many of us, people who have pensions, who have mm. savings? What effect are they having? Yeah, I mean, I think we have to remember this is essentially a human story. And ordinary people are going to be affected by what's happening now. We're going to see probably more unemployment. We're going to see less consumer spending. We're going to see small businesses finding it harder to borrow money for their businesses. And all of this will, of course, affect our pensions, um, the kind of services governments are providing us. This is a very worrying time. It's a very toxic cocktail when you have, on the one hand, the United States in a real state of crisis with flat economic growth and now this downgrade. And on the other, the Eurozone entering into a potential meltdown is a very dangerous situation and we as individuals are going to pay the price yet again of a crisis that we really didn't start a few years back. A lot of this does seem to be being driven by the, the Eurozone debt crisis. Um, markets looking for a resolution but there doesn't really appear to, appear to be one readily at hand, does there? No, I mean the real question we have to ask ourselves is do our political leaders have the capacity, the capability and the leadership that is so needed at this time? And that is a big question. You know, will Angela Merkel really commit hundreds of billions of Germany's money to prop up the Eurozone? And if not, what will happen? I mean, these are very uncharted waters. So would you say that this is a crisis of politics rather than economics? I think you can never think about economics absent of politics. The two are inexorably intertwined and yet again we're seeing that they are and also that there is always a human cost. Uh, and David, back to you, just to, to return to the, um, the US debt rating, um, what sort of criteria do you use for assessing a change in status when you do want to make one? Well, I mean, what we look at in terms of uh, the US and, and other governments is basically over the medium term, what is the uh, prospects of, of public debt being on a sustainable path, that they have uh, the liabilities and the commitments they've made are actually properly funded. And as Narina says, what's actually the sort of medium term economic outlook? What's the prospects for, for growth? And actually, I'd say from our point of view, one of the things that we worry about more with respect to um, the US at this point in time, rather than the budget deficit per se, which is a problem which they do have to address, but they have time to address that, is actually that the US economy has slowed mm -hmm. very sharply mm -hmm. of, of, of late. And um, it's got to the point where one can't wholly discount the potential for, for a double dip. And that would obviously not only be very bad news for the US um, and, and for ordinary people within, within the US, but, but also actually for, for the global economy as well.
We keep hearing a lot about this double dip recession. Mm. Uh, how likely do you think that is? And is it one of these self-fulfilling prophecies that the more we hear about it and the more we mention it on programmes like this, that the more nervous people get and the more likely it is to happen? Well, I think there is truth in that. I think we become part of the future that we are now discussing. And, you know, because the market is made up of people who are watching shows like this and looking at the recommendations of rating agencies like yours, and we become part of a narrative. And, you know, the trouble with the US downgrade also is that it does signal something pretty negative and some people will respond perhaps in a less measured way to what you might have hoped and we've seen that in the past so you know we are potentially um, part of what will happen next. The, the only thing just as a sort of a slight um, not to be uh, bright point if you like is that um, you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I made my best efforts quite hard at, at this point in time is that I mean there, there were some one-off factors that did contribute to a slowdown in, in growth. The impact of uh, the tragedy in, in Japan did actually have global implications because of the supply links. Um, much higher oil prices, in fact, because of the Arab uh, Spring, um, has also had, had, had an impact. And some of those will, I think, um, sort of dissipate. So, um, you know, we may see some uh, pick up in momentum in, in the second half. But Noreen is absolutely right. At the moment, um, confidence is very fragile, and that's bad news for everybody. Okay, momentarily, I thought you were going to take an edge off the gloom there, but you just <laughs> yeah, well. sent us back then. Thank you very much indeed for both of you coming thank in. You. Noreen Hertz and David Riley, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.